Welcome, and in today's video. And of course guys, don't forget to check out today's Nutri Tip where I discuss why eating this whole as opposed to doing this is far more beneficial to your weight loss journey. But if you really have to do this, then you're going to have to add some of this. So stick around and I'll explain why. Alright guys, so it's just about that time to get down to business. So from myself and the team, it's time to enjoy and um, let us know how it goes. And like and subscribe for future content. Enjoy. Bye. So in today's program, we're diving into four sets, each comprising of three exercises. Interspersed between the sets, there are core exercises for active recovery. The timer will be on for 45 seconds of work, 20 seconds of rest for most of the exercises within the circuit. After completing all four sets, you get a two minute breather. Repeat the circuit two to three times, adjusting to your fitness level. And on that note, it's time to dive in and transform that body. So pucker up buttercup is going to be a hell of a ride. Now this workout is not just about building strength and endurance, it promises toning and of course all-round conditioning and is tailored for convenience so it can be done at home or at the gym. Now using a warm-up that incorporates mobility and range of motion is crucial because it prepares your body by gradually increasing blood flow, loosening muscles and enhancing joint flexibility. This exercise is an excellent warm-up as it dynamically loads these muscle groups, getting them ready for heavier loads and intense workouts while promoting better activation and engagement. Watch the ladies for alternative exercises within each circuit should you need to adjust the exercise for whatever reason. In this example, we see JD and myself using a standard kettlebell swing technique, except JD using a dumbbell instead of a kettlebell, whereas Sue's with slight lower back issues is demonstrating a more squat format swing. Focus on sitting nice and deep into your hip line, creating a strong hinge to protect your lower back. Making sure to keep a nice neutral spine as opposed to rounded back. Keeping the chin tucked to keep a neutral neck. I visualize wrapping your shoulder blades around your ribcage, bringing them together in your mid back as we open the chest and the top end of the range. Make sure you squeeze the glutes before thrusting hip upwards and of course keep the arms at roughly 45 degrees throughout the movement to keep constant tension on the tricep. Pay attention to Sue's slight adjustment to angle in the arm due to shoulder injury. As always remember, tuck the chin for a neutral neck, hands directly under the shoulder line, knees directly under the hips, toes driven into the ground. And always, draw the abdominal in and engage, do not brace the core. Remember, you should be able to breathe comfortably through this exercise. For me personally, incorporating quadruped exercises into your regimes is really important. 
Well, firstly, because they activate and strengthen the deep core muscles, your IHA system, helping to improve stability and support your spine. Here we have three versions of the same exercise. Number one, the regular. Number two, a regressed version on knees. And number three, for someone with shoulder injuries, a half push-up off knees minimizes the stress on the shoulders by limiting the range of motion while maintaining the exercise's benefits. Be sure to keep your hips as stable as possible as you transition between left and right shoulder taps. For the hand placement in this exercise, I prefer the hands to be shoulder width apart with the index fingers pointing roughly around 45 degrees to one another. Here I prefer the back lunge as opposed to a forward lunge as it places less direct stress on the knee joint by allowing the force of gravity to align more naturally with the hips and ankles during the movement. Pay close attention to Sue's technique during the bicep curl with her elbow line backwards putting less pressure in the front shoulder line. This variation of the crunch, known as the lying leg crunch, typically reduces the involvement of the hip flexors and can intensify the engagement of the rectus abdominis, otherwise known as your six-pack muscles. Pay attention to Sue's variation of this exercise with the knees bent and feet flat. Typically this will help reduce the possibility of arching in the lower back area. Focus on driving your hip line backwards. Imagine you're going to be sitting onto a chair. This will enable the knees to stay behind the toe line during the movement. During the dead bug exercise, we target the lower fibers of the abdominal. This is a small, concentrated movement with a slight hip tilt towards oneself to engage those lower fibers properly. Once again, notice the three different formats on this particular exercise. Myself doing the more advanced, JD the slightly regressed, and Sue showing off the more protected version for lower back. Performing a single leg plank not only strengthens the core muscles but also engages the body's counter-rotational forces, enhancing stability and promoting balanced muscle development throughout the core. The elevation of the leg during the exercise will also force the glute complex to help with the stability of the hip. 
Adding the band across the knee will intensify the engagement of the glute complex, promoting greater strength and stability while further activating the hip abductors. for a well-deserved break, two minute recovery as you prepare for the next round, depending on your individual fitness levels. And now time for the Nutri Tip of today. Welcome to today's Nutri Tip, where we will briefly dive into why eating this bad boy whole, as opposed to blending the hell out of it, is more beneficial for your overall weight loss goals. But for some individuals, the blending process might be easier on the digestion. Uh, especially those that have digestive issues or have trouble chewing. And if this is the case, um, I'll show you a healthy and simple hack that will make you a slightly more weight loss friendly version. But before we dive in, we've got to talk about the ingredients. This is a no-go zone, whereas you're good to go. As we know, when fruit ripens, the starches present break down into simple sugars, leading to an increase in the overall sugar content. Now ripe fruit also tend to have a higher glycemic index compared to greener and fresher fruits. So regardless if you're eating ripe fruit or blending them, it's a no-go zone if you're looking to stabilize your blood sugar. And by now we should all be aware of the importance of stabilizing our blood sugar within our weight loss journey. And it brings me back to that old saying, all calories are not made equal. It's how the body reacts to those calories that's really, really important. Now on that note, when we eat whole fruit, you're getting all the good stuff, including the fiber that helps with digestion and keeps your blood sugar levels steady. But when you blend fruit into a smoothie, you may break down the fiber, potentially making it easier for your body to digest quickly, leading to a faster spike in blood sugar. Now blending fruit can increase its glycemic index, which means the sugars hit your bloodstream faster. And this quick sugar release might cause a faster spike in blood sugar, which can trigger a corresponding rapid release of insulin to manage the increased sugar in your bloodstream. Then there's the simple yet important fact that chewing whole food tells the brain you're eating, which helps you feel satisfied. 
Now, absolutely, including certain protein sources, fiber-rich foods, and low GI fruits when making a smoothie can help lower its overall glycemic index and mitigate the impact on blood sugar. But what if I told you that by simply adding cinnamon to your smoothies, it may potentially lower the overall glycemic index as well as promote more stable blood sugar levels? Well, here's how. Well, it turns out cinnamon does more than just spice up your smoothie. Certain compounds in cinnamon could potentially enhance insulin sensitivity, aiding the uptake of glucose by cells, potentially reducing the body's need for insulin, and aiding in blood sugar regulation by activating insulin receptors. Additionally, it may slow stomach emptying and enzyme activity, leading to more stable blood sugar after consuming high-carb fruits. However, it's not a substitute for medication or lifestyle changes. Consult a healthcare professional before using cinnamon supplements for managing blood sugar levels. So ultimately, whether you choose to eat a banana hole or blend it into a smoothie, uh, it's all up to personal preferences, dietary needs, and of course, health goals. But both can be part of a really healthy lifestyle. Enjoy. <laughs>